Hello students, welcome to this uh, presentation about the paintings of Georges Seurat, a uh, French painter from the 1800s. So let's look at uh, some of Monsieur Seurat's paintings. Okay, here you see a picture of George Seurat is what Americans say. The French say Georges Seurat. So take that as you will. Since you're American, you can just say George Seurat. Um, and you can see there that he lived from 1859 to 1891. And when you look at his painting, this is actually a small version of his painting. One, one of the, This is called a study. So basically a study is just he's experimenting with how a big painting will look later. And if you look at the way the painting brush strokes are, they're just sort of big blobs. And that was pretty common in the day for impressionist painters. But George Surratt wanted more. He wanted a more detailed color, something that would sparkle, if you will, or seem to sparkle anyway. And if you look, the painting starts to get a little more detailed. And this was one of his first paintings that he exhibited in Chicago. It's in the Art Institute of Chicago now. Um, Sean Teacher got to see it back, I don't know, in 1984, I think, I got to see that painting. So it's uh, quite beautiful. Here we see another study. And if you'll notice this time, this beginning of a painting is made of little dots. And here is George Seurat thinking about something. He's thinking about how can he make his artwork look more detailed and more colorful and different from everyone else's artwork. And here he's just sort of studying how he can just sort of make little dots of color. And what's important that you understand is that the dots of color are chosen to go beside each other. He hasn't really figured that out yet, but he's working on it. That the dots of color eventually will go beside each other to achieve a certain effect. And the other thing about the dots is that they go a certain direction. If you look at the top of this painting and you see those lights, there's sort of lights above the uh, the circus performer there that it seems like the blue dots that are around the lights are going in a direction. So that's sort of the two things I want you to think about here is that he's not really using lines here at all. He's just using dots, but the dots end up making lines, if that makes sense. And then he sort of chooses the colors of the dots to sort of do things. And you'll see more of what I'm talking about in just a moment. Ah, uh, yes. This is basically the same picture you just looked at. And he painted this idea over and over. But notice how there are no lines. It seems to be little tiny dots many, many dots that make up lines because he's put certain colors beside other colors to achieve this effect. It almost looks like a foggy photograph and that's kind of what he wanted. When you look at it, it definitely looks really, really different in comparison to some of the other paintings we've looked at. And here you see a close-up of the same idea. 
You see this person performing. Do you see the lights at the top? They're actual fires that are burning that are providing the light. And uh, yeah, this is before electric lights, but I think it achieves an effect he's trying to go for. And and once again, I want you to see that he's not making lines. He's making dots beside other dots of different colors. And it achieves this, uh, I don't know, foggy or hazy effect. But when you really look at it, it kind of, I don't want to say it sparkles, but there is an intensity to it caused by the two colors beside each other that were were dots. Now, here is what's called a detail. And what we're looking at here is just a tiny, tiny little fraction of the painting. You know, maybe two square inches of the painting. Small, about the size of your thumb. And if you look carefully at it, you see these tiny, tiny little dots. Maybe you see yellow with red on top of it. And they're beside other yellow dots and beside green dots. This, uh, this way of painting is very difficult. And people couldn't understand why he would go through so much trouble. But... In the end, the effect of what he was trying to do became quite, quite easy to see. Look at this circus. Um, again, no lines, and all the colors that you see become mixed, not by mixing the paint together, but by putting the dots beside each other. And when you put the dots beside each other, the light mixes the paint before you. In other words, it's not, it's not the paint being mixed, but the color of light coming from the painting that mixes in your eyes and in your brain. And that was his magic. That was his his special thing that he created and invented. He, if you look at the the ground under the horse, it's almost shiny. It uh, almost sparkles with uh, with color. And you can see, if you look very closely, you can see all the different colors dots that he's put in there. It, uh, even makes the clown's hair it's very red. So hopefully you can see what. George Seurat was trying to do when he made this painting. Here you can really see the dots. Look carefully in the background where the feet are up in the air. Do you see all those dots? It's amazing how it almost looks like a photograph. This thing called Ken Ken was a kind of dance in the day. But he's making, like if you look at the man's coat, the man with the mustache and the hat, if you look at his coat, you can see that it is brown, but if you look closely, it's not brown. It's like different colors of dots. There's lots of blue in there and lots of red in there. And he puts these sort of beside each other and lets them mix in your eyes. Look at this one. Oh my. No lines here, just dots. But it certainly implies lines, doesn't it? He lived a very short life. He married and he had a son and he caught a disease. Many people think that it was pneumonia. And he died and shortly after that his son died left his wife. So his ending wasn't very sad, and he didn't live a long time, but the paintings he made were amazing. And I hope that by looking at these, you see what he was trying to do.
So, what do you think? Would you have ever thought to put little dots of color beside other little dots of color to make your paintings shimmer with color? I think that his his greatest work, it, it's huge. It's bigger than the entire wall of your whole classroom. It's called, uh, well, English people call it uh, Sunday in the Park. But uh, it's called Isle de Granger. And I saw this in Chicago in 1984, I think. And this painting is so beautiful. And it's quite controversial because the Germans were going to burn it in World War II. And it was captured by the French underground and smuggled out of, out of France and saved by the Chicago Art Institute. And the French were quite grateful that it was it was rescued. And then after the war, they said, we want our painting back. And uh, the Chicago Art Institute said, I don't think we're going to give it back. We paid for it, so we're going to keep it. So that's a big sore spot for a lot of a lot of art lovers in France. But anyway, what do you think about these dots? I uh, look forward to hearing your opinion and seeing what your artwork will look like. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Bye.